Hello, my name is Marcus Peck uh, and I will be talking today about our manuscript about the combination of sorafenib and erlotinib in a rat model, uh, orthotopic rat model of uh, HCC. The idea came to this manuscript came when sorafenib became the standard of care for advanced stage HCC and it was quite clear that we needed some further improvement for the treatment of advanced stage HCC. So it was quite obvious since chemotherapy was not working in that setting that one would try to combine targeted agents in order to improve the response and also the survival of patients with advanced stage HCC. So there were actually a few preclinical and also early clin clinical data available that suggested that it might be useful to combine the EGF receptor inhibitor erlotinib with sorafenib, and that's what we did in our animal model. Now in this model, the Morris rat hepatoma cells are grown subcutaneously uh, in, in a uh, Morris rat and then these uh, tumors, once they're large enough, are implanted uh, subcapsularly into the liver of these Morris rats. So it's a syngenaic model. And after these uh, tumors grow nicely, then the animals are treated with whatever substance you want to treat them like. In our case, control, serafinib, erlotinib, and the combination of serafinib and erlotinib. Now, what we expected was to see a single agent activity not only of serafinib but also of erlotinib and of course we wanted to see an improved activity of the combination of both agents. So we were quite surprised to find out that erlotinib as a monotherapy did not slow down the growth of the uh, hepatoma cells in the rat livers and even more so, also the combination of erlotinib plus sorafenib was not able to uh, improve the response of the rat hepatoma cells beyond the effect that we were able to see with sorafenib, which was actually nicely effective. So we then uh, wanted to look more into the details and into the mechanism of action and, and we found that actually Erlotinib was, in, as opposed to serafinib, was not able to uh, induce apoptosis and to slow down the uh, hepatoma cell growth, neither in the Morris hepatoma cells nor in also human uh, hepatoma cells like HEPG2 or, or SNU. Uh, this, this was actually quite a surprise finding and also when we looked at the aortic ring assays to look at the angiogenetic inhibition with this agent we could find that erlotinib not only did not reduce angiogenesis but actually slightly increased angiogenesis uh, of endothelial cells uh, in this model and when we looked further into the mechanisms we found that this was probably due to an upregulation of VGF mRNA which occurred with uh, sorafenib, but especially occurred with erlotinib, and the most it occurred with the combination of sorafenib plus erlotinib. So, to our surprise, but also disappointingly, uh, the combination of these two agents did not in, uh, put any additional advantage uh, for the treatment uh, of advanced stage HCC. And even though the data are not out yet, uh, the, the, the speculation could be that also in the human phase 3 study that has been conducted to date, and we will probably see the data in the near future, it seems like this effect might also not have been a, a very dramatic positive one. Now, how does this uh, relate to the available data on um, erlotinib? Now, there are two early stage studies in the human setting published so far. Uh, on erlotinib in HCC, and these studies are only moderately positive. They show some growth reduction, but it was not good enough uh, so that the companies producing the compounds were going ahead uh, with the development of EGF receptor uh, blocking agents, neither with, with the antibody cetuximab nor with erlotinib, which indicates that probably also in the human setting, you it will be the same as in the rat model that erlotinib is really not a very active 
compound in the treatment of HCC. The other question, of course, is if erlotinib is not an ideal candidate to combine with sorafenib, which other candidates drugs could be? Now, to date, we have a large number of different compounds that uh, are potential candidates for such a combination. Um, however, it seems not too likely that by combining two receptor tyrosine kinases, uh, one will really achieve dramatic effects. And the reason for that mostly being is that they inhibit the similar pathways. They are all kind of dirty drugs like sorafenib, which means that they are all inhibiting multiple kinases, not just one specific kinase, and that they are oftentimes evading uh, the, the blockage of these drugs, the tumor cells, and therefore if you add another, another drug that inhibits similar pathways, you're not really achieving a great deal of effect. Now, currently, people are looking into the combined actions of sorafenib with the uh, mTOR inhibitor, Everolimus, which is a distinct pathway that's being targeted and it might be that this combination uh, might be more successful. Studies are ongoing, uh, but at least Everolimus does, does have some single agent activity and it could be that these two agents are a reasonable combination. The other thing that's being tried at the moment is the combination of sorafenib with chemotherapy, especially doxorubicin, after the quite uh, promising phase 2 data uh, in, in the human setting. And phase 3 trials are now ongoing, so, and if they are successful, this could be for the very first time that there is really a role for chemotherapy in HCC. We don't know yet, but this, these are certainly interesting studies to be looking forward to. And then, of course, there is a large range of different targets that are being looked at in early phase studies, phase 1, phase 2 studies, and uh, it really remains to be seen whether one of these other drugs will be able to be effective against HCC in a similar fashion or even better than sorafenib and could be combined with sorafenib. So I think the future looks very interesting for HCC treatment, even though currently most trials that have been published or conducted after the successful trial with sorafenib were actually a failure.